So as you saw in the previous presentation, and this is the team that also worked together on module 3A. And here we have a quick reminder of the core structure and where model 3A on interlingual speaking and intralingual speaking for television sits. And so now the students have learned about uh, interlingual speaking and how to carry out the pre, peri and post process. They can put all of this into practice in module 3A. The module focuses on intralingual speaking, uh, specifically for television but also on interlingual re-speaking. First of all, it is important to distinguish between live subtitling for television and live subtitling for an event that is not televised. There are various differences in terms of workflow, content, speed and interactions that can be had with speakers. In terms of broadcast delay, when we're speaking for television, a speaker can be given a broadcast delay, so they will have time to edit the subtitles before they are broadcast on air. However, speakers do not have such broadcast delay for live events, which means that they have less time to edit the subtitles. For workflow, when we're speaking for television, a speaker can work alone or as part of a team. This means that a speaker could work with an editor and a broadcaster. For a live event, a speaker would usually work alone. The environment also differs between the two contexts. For a live event, the speaker can physically be in the same environment as the speaker and the audience. So, if the speaker is speaking too fast, a speaker can make sort of signal or asking them to slow down, which of course cannot be done for television. And the corrections also differ. For a live event, corrections can be made by a speaker typing a dash or an asterisk to highlight that some misrecognized text has been corrected. However, corrections in a television setting are not as easily forgiven and it is best to only broadcast text that has been corrected by an editor. Live subtitles for television can also be recorded and many amusing uncorrected texts had made the media. So here is the structure of the module 3A. They are organized around the three levels of difficulty, the beginner, intermediate, intermediate and advanced. And each unit has four focuses. So first you have the workflow, which focuses on working alone, working in a team and working as an editor. Then we have the, the different genres of television, for example, sports, the news, weather, speeches, interviews, the quality assessment, which draws on the NTR module, and practical interlinguing re-speaking exercises, which allow students to put their knowledge into practice. And now we'll go and see uh, and, and compare the different focuses and how they contribute to the training. I'm sorry, there we go, I think. No, this was still my slide. No, I'm... This is your slide. No, my slide still... Okay. Sorry, Haley. I thought it was your turn. It's still my turn, apparently. It's important for students to read about different configurations they might find in a professional environment. In a team, you could have a re-speaker, an editor, and a broadcaster. Readings on a workflow appear throughout module A and at the beginning of each unit to take students through each of the different roles. A reading on working alone as a re-speaker frames the first unit. It details what working alone in a live and semi-live context would entail and includes example videos of re-speakers working in these contexts. Unit 2 details the roles of each person in a team to live subtitle a television program. And Unit 3 looks at a specific role for working as an editor. Then you have the second focus, the genres of television. The second focus of Module 3A is on genres of television. We are working on five different genres for television, on sports, news, weather, speeches and interviews. And each genre is introduced with a reading that goes through the main challenges that it poses for interlingual re-speakers. Various aspects of re-speaking are also touched upon that are specific to each genre. For example, 
sports and the weather have visual images that the speaker must take into account because they may not need to respeak that part if for example that information is already on the screen and another example is that interviews have more than one speaker and require speaker identification or coloring that need to be added to the respoken output and each reading is followed by a quiz to check that the trainee's comprehension um, is there and that they have actually learned something. Focus three, Haley. now it's your turn, I'm sorry. Don't worry, thank you. So the third focus is on uh, quality assessment. At the end of module 2b, which we presented previously, students are introduced to quality assessment in interlingual speaking and more specifically to the NTR model. So in module 3a the NTR model has a focus throughout all of the units the NTR model assesses uh, translation and recognition errors and effective additions made in interlingual respeaking to calculate an accuracy rate of the respoken output in each module of the game, there are readings dedicated to the five subjects of translation errors so content omission substitution and addition errors and form correctness and form style errors. Each reading defines one of the five translation errors, gives an overview of what causes that particular error when re-speaking, and then provides real-life uh, multilingual examples. So we've included an example here on, on the slide of a critical content substitution error, which in English says that uh, pouring a pint isn't easy, whereas in the Spanish respoken output, it says that it is easy. So readings with these types of multilingual examples are fed through uh, the units of module 3A, and they allow students to understand these causes and consequences of translation errors on their own and students will be able to use this knowledge when completing the exercises as well. The fourth and final focus for Module 3A is on the practical respeaking exercises. So each reading on workflow, translation error and genre of television is then followed by three interlingual respeaking exercises on that specific genre of television. So the exercises bring together the focuses of this module and allow students to apply their theoretical knowledge that they have acquired throughout the unit to complete these practical interlingual speaking exercises. And exercises also remind students of the three stages of the interlingual speaking process that we previously explored in module 2b. The exercises ask students to prepare, uh, to, to practice, preparation required for the pre-process to complete the actual re-speaking task for the peri process and then NTR templates with the transcript of each video are included for all exercises so trainees can carry out uh, NTR analysis as a post-process task if they want to and so in the end is an example of an exercise uh, this example is for a student to re-speak the news it asks the student to prepare for the video in advance with the terminology list, to carry out the re-speaking task, and then to complete a quality assessment with the NTL model. And this particular exercise comes just after students will have read about content substitution errors. So some questions are included at the end of this exercise to prompt students to make some uh, observations on that specific translation error. Uh, the exercises throughout or 3A can be completed if trainees only have access to speech recognition software. Uh, but at the end of module 3A, trainees can also find some ideas for exercises that can be carried out using professional subtitling software with speech recognition integration. And this is something that would uh, help better equip them for working in a professional environment. <laughs> 